Hello and welcome. This is part two of the Skyhook Games Railworks Austria 1014 introduction video. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to start up the locomotive and how to drive it. Now, before we start, you may notice that we've uh, changed location. We're still on the three country corner route, but we're now in Bregenz. And uh, I've hooked up some carriages. These are not included in the package. These are freeware carriages, which I got from the Railworks Austria website. The only reason why I've done this is because I wanted to show you some stop start services with a uh, regional train, which is where I think you get to see the most of how to drive this locomotive. So every time you start up the product, the locomotive is actually going to be in a cold and dark state. So your first job is going to be to start up the locomotive. Now this uh, locomotive actually requires a key, which um, is in your pocket. And uh, it needs to be inserted in a small hole behind this lever here. So the, the way to do this is you just put your uh, mouse here where it says, to, to, to this corner here where it says enter key and you click and there's the key and then all you need to do is turn the key and then you have this button here which says activate cab and you turn that and now the cab is unlocked and is ready to be used and um, the first thing we need to do is get some power and to do that we need to switch on the battery now in the real local the battery is actually behind this door here uh, which we cannot access in train simulator. So all you need to do now is press shift and B for Bravo. And then you have to wait a while. Uh, wait till this screen here is fully loaded. So there's the screen loading and once that's done everything is booted up and we are ready to continue. So now with the battery running we can uh, select the Pantocraft that we want. By default it is Panto 2, we can leave that but you could also have one or actually both of them. I'm going to leave it on two but if you move the selector here you can choose which uh, pantograph you want whilst we're back here we might as well switch on the headlights standard uh, setting is this one here which is white at the front and red at the back so if we go outside you can see we've now got the uh, headlights on right let's go back to the front with the pantograph uh, selected we can now raise it you can do this with this button here, just move it forward and just observe this indicator here. There we go, that means it's connected. Next, we just switch on the main switch, which is this switch here. But I'm gonna go outside because I'd like to show you something really cool about this locomotive. So here we are on the roof and uh, as you can see the uh, pantograph has been raised and is connected and the power runs through here and is supposed to go through that line here into the engine room but uh, you may notice there is no connection here so I'm now going to switch on the main switch which I can do by pressing the Z button and watch what happens there we go so as you can see the even animated uh, this little thing here that actually connects the power outlet to the power line into the engine, which I think is really neat. I've never seen that before. So with the main switch switched on, we're almost there. Next thing you need to do is switch on the coolant, cooling system. Uh, just put it to A for automatic. So you can see, uh, well, you can hear all the uh, fans coming on. Next, we uh, need to put on the reverser we, we want to go forward now the reverse is these two buttons here so you just press the forward button and it lights up right and the next thing we need to do is move this lever here and this is going to move this triangle here and this is what i would describe as a speed limiter 
So the local is gonna, gonna uh, accelerate to whatever this points to and it's gonna hold that speed. Now at the moment this is zero, which means if you would uh, add power, the local would not accelerate. So the line speed where we are now is 60 kilometers per hour. So you can either just drag the lever here or what I find much better is to use the keyboard. If you use the Y key, it goes up and if you use the C key, C for Charlie, it goes back down. If you just uh, push the, the key down once, it always increases by exactly five kilometers per hour. So I'm gonna move this to 60, and that also uh, releases the brakes. And with that, we're almost there. Um, the last thing I'd like to do is switch on the instrument lights, just because it looks pretty. There's a cab light as well. I think it's uh, it's not dark enough yet. This is for um, high beam lights, low beam lights. There's a horn as well, high and low. Um, well, we can listen to that if you want. There we are. Everyone likes a nice horn. A um, few other buttons here, um, you know, wipers and all that stuff. Uh, one thing uh, I'd like to point out is that the PZB or Inducy in this case, which is a very similar system, and the CIFA, so all the safety systems, are always switched on by default. If you do not want them on, you can switch them off. I personally don't like CIFA, so all I need to do is press Control, Shift and S, and that will switch off the CIFA. If you want to switch off PCB or Induzi, just press Control, Shift and A, and that will do the same. Uh, I'm gonna leave that on, uh, and that's how we're gonna drive. So we're almost ready, we're pretty much ready. Last thing we need to do is turn around, look down here, and you see this button here, and this is the spring brake. It's essentially like a parking brake, and it's always on, so if you would try to drive away now nothing would happen so we're basically releasing the parking brake okay there. oh hello okay uh yes right um and with that we are finally ready to go so this is the procedure that you have to do every time i've done it a few times now and, and i can do this within i don't know one or two minutes so it looks like a few steps but actually it, it's not it's not that difficult Right, so before we drive off, a few things. I'm gonna bring up the HUD, because I think it makes it more clear. So this locomotive doesn't have a power lever in the usual sense. What your job is, is to select how much power the engine has available to achieve the speed you have set here. So the local will now accelerate to 60 kilometers per hour and you can tell it how, how much power it will have to do so or how fast it can accelerate. And how much power uh, it will have you can actually read here in kilonewton. So what you need to do, the uh, lever here is now in zero, which is neutral. You can use the A key, move it one notch forward to F and now if I move it to plus as long as it's in plus I will increase the amount of power available to the locomotive so let me just show you I move it to plus and you can see the power moving up I want a hundred kilonewton so now move it back to F and it will hold that exact power there we are and we are off So if you want to um, accelerate a bit faster, you just push the lever back into plus, give it a bit more power, and we'll hold that amount of power with F. If you feel that this is too fast acceleration, you just go to zero and reduce the power and then go back to F. If you leave it at zero until the pointer here goes to zero, that means you're now coasting along and the local has no power available. Right, so let's um, 
apply a bit of power. As you can see, the loco automatically reduces the power now because we are already at 60. Line speed is now, well, it's just going up to 120. So all you need to do now is use the Y key and move that to 120. And the loco will automatically speed up to 120 and hold that speed. Now one thing I'd like to point out is that the speed limiter is really designed to hold the speed. You shouldn't really drive the locomotive just using that. Now we're on a flat, we have a fairly short train and uh, it works really well. You can actually speed up and slow down using this and th there's no problem. But um, I've tried this on a mountain pass with a very long freight train and that's when it gets a bit tricky. So if you are on a mountain pass with a long heavy train, I would recommend putting the speed uh, limiter to V max, which is 160 kilometers per hour and just drive it manually like you would with any other train. Just add and uh, reduce power using the FM plus key and the zero key and then just hold the speed manually. Right, so I want to stop in Lauteras. So first I'm going to reduce the power to zero and then I'm going to use the electrodynamic brake. So I'm going to go down to EB, electrodynamic brake, and I'm just going to start adding a bit of braking power here. Again, if I go to EB, it's going to hold that braking power. I'm going to add a bit more. I think we're gonna miss this one <laughs> never mind I just want to show you how the electrodynamic brake works so it's exactly the exact same thing just the other way around so if I now go to zero you can see the pointer going up towards zero and the amount of braking uh, decreases so let's try and stop in Walford instead so uh, again I'll go to F go to plus I'll add power I'm happy with that. So let's say I want to drive at 90 kilometers per hour. Oops. So, well, this should be about, in, yeah, maybe a tiny bit more. And this sort of holds the speed I want. Right, so we're about one and a half kilometers away. So let's go to zero, coast for a while and then use the electrodynamic brake to slow us down. <clears throat> okay, so the uh, warning signal here is orange, which means we actually have a red signal ahead, so we have to stop anyway. So I'm gonna reduce the speed now using the electrodynamic brake. Again, choose how much power you want. and then hold it. And in addition to that, you can just use the train brake, which is the usual key commands, you know, with the hash and the semicolon. And again, this works exactly in the same way. So you don't just add a bit of power, you choose how much braking you want. So um, if I just put this to zero and show you, so I'm just gonna push the uh, train brake for a little bit and then let go and it's now going to hold that amount of braking power so if I push in the other direction it's going to release it now so this is how you do it you just select how much power you want you select how much braking you want so I'm going to add some braking now and then let go and it will hold that until it comes to a stop right and that brings us into Wolford so as usual, you press the T key to open the doors. Now because these are Railworks Austria carriages, they can communicate with this locomotive. And uh, if you look at this, this uh, little thing here, this is uh, essentially how the door is operated. So if I press T, you can see this is open. 
and uh, an orange light has come on and as long as this is in this position you can actually not drive off because that means the doors are open so you need to wait now until the blue light has come on and the lever has moved back into the upright position okay so um, everyone is aboard and if we look ahead lo and behold we have a green signal now so all we need to do is release the brakes there we are in case you're interested in details so this needs to be on five and this needs to be on zero and uh, if that's the case you're ready to go in terms of braking so again go to f gonna select I don't know around a hundred seems to be right to just start off hold it don't need to hold down the keys by the way you just need to you know press them and the lever will stay where it is there we are let's give a bit more power So line speed here is 140. So let's speed up to 140 and then in Dorbin we'll just stop and then hopefully that will have given you a, a nice idea of how to drive this locomotive. Okay, so we are approaching a speed limit of 120, so all I do is move the speed limiter down to 120 and as you can see the locomotive automatically slows down to about 120 and will then proceed to hold that speed. I can already see Dombin. Now as we come around the corner I already know that the warning signal is gonna show us that we need to slow down to 60 kilometers per hour. Um, so I'm gonna show you that as well. There we are the warning signal. Two green, one orange. So that means we need to slow down. I confirmed that I've seen it and I'll just put the uh, speed limiter down to 60 and as you can see the train starts slowing down With that we are going to enter the station if we look at the next signal the main signal is saying proceed at 60 but the warning signal says that the next main signal is actually red so we need to confirm that again and I'm just gonna put the power to zero and slowly coast into the station and then just use the brake to slow us down So again, I'll just start adding a bit of brake. I don't know, maybe this much. Yeah, that'll do. Can release a bit. And there we are, nice and easy. Okay, press the T key. So here we are in Dornbirn and I hope that this was helpful and I hope you understand now how to boot up the loco and how to drive it. Like I said it is a bit different but um, I, I really enjoy it. I think it's also a much more precise way of driving because you can actually choose the exact amount of kilonewtons you want. So if you have any questions, please put them in the comments. If there's anything else you want to see, if there's, I don't know, any, anything I've missed, 
any other videos you might want to see about this product please let me know and um, yeah thanks for watching I uh, hope you enjoyed it and until next time bye bye